this axe even sharp? What's up guys, Dan here, Cold Cracker Bushcraft. So my ax was cutting, it is sharp, just a little bit of movie magic for all of you. But if you notice, after a few hits, I really didn't get too much cutting done. Why is that? Well, because I picked a terrible location to actually buck up a log. So what is bucking up a log, I guess, or bucking up a stick, you can say. So when it comes to ax work, generally the first thing you're going to do is cut down the sapling or the tree and then from there you're going to have to cut it to length you're generally not going to take this whole tree and do something with the whole thing so you got to cut it to length now if you have a saw cheater you're a cheater just kidding but um, if you're going all traditional and you're using your axe you're gonna have to take your axe now and split this into length before you carve it or do whatever okay so that's called bucking so um, bucking gives people a ton of issues and it's because of this one thing this is the number one reason and then we'll go into how to properly do it show you some examples that is because whatever they are cutting on such as this log it seems so great it's up a little higher it's more comfortable it's moving okay so whenever I strike my axe into my workpiece that whole log moves so all the force I'm creating with a bit of this axe into my piece of wood okay is just transferring down moving everything so when I do this okay yes I'm getting a little bit of cutting action in here but as soon as the weight of the axe itself gets into it it just pushes away and I lose all my cutting power so if you are going to find a spot, you can't have anything that's gonna move. All right, so we're gonna go down on the ground now because generally people will find something like this. They'll place their work piece on top of it and they're gonna cut. But with a really quick um, visual and a little bit of physical power here, you can see this log is also moving. So in this instance, all of our power again is gonna go from my hand or my ax per se into my piece and get transferred down into this. Not good. So what are we gonna do? We looked at a log that's up in the air and it's comfortable, that thing's bouncing. We looked at a log that's down on the ground, that thing's bouncing. Well, you just gotta find the right log or you gotta find something else. So let's look at the log that I'm sitting on right now. It's bigger, it's heavier, and when I push some pressure on it, it does not budge. That's what we're looking for as a cutting surface. So look at this thing. I am pushing like a maniac and it is not moving. Great cutting surface right here. So this would be optimal for cutting and bucking up our wood. Now another really great option a lot of people overlook all the time are exposed roots on trees. Now this is a smaller version but it was right here next to where we were just filming so I'm showing it. But sometimes you could find really large exposed roots. So in that case, these roots of course aren't gonna flex. They're not going anywhere. They are great solid pieces of wood to use as cutting surfaces. And then last but not least, probably my favorite are trees, okay? They are super helpful when cutting smaller sticks, manageable size sticks um, that we can handle very easily um, to length. So in this case, what I would be doing is placing the stick, okay, generally behind me like this to keep myself safe, all right? And then I'm gonna pick where I wanna split this and I'm just utilizing the tree to keep that thing steady and I can cut that to length because the tree is not going anywhere. But now with larger pieces of wood, it might be a little bit more strenuous on you and it might be a little bit more difficult to actually hold that piece, balance it against a tree and work. So in our case, we found another very sturdy log that we can cut on. Now, one mistake a lot of people make is that they try to balance their entire stick and this is a pretty long tree that I have here, okay? They try to balance this along the length of the log. You really don't need to do that as long as the tree that you're cutting, all right, or the stick that you're cutting has one secure point. That's where you're gonna be hitting, you're good to go. So just angle it across the tree and you'll be set to jet, okay? So we're gonna get that angled and now we're gonna start to make our cuts. So what we're not gonna do with smaller stuff like this is we're not gonna make the traditional V cut, okay? That would be coming in on one side, coming in the other. If the wood does get bigger, you might have to do that. But generally what I tell people is this, just start by angling 
your ax at a 45 degree angle into where you want to cut and just continue to strike into that area. Generally with one, one and a half inch in smaller material, a few strikes with a good sharp ax at that angle is going to cut through nice and clean. So before I hit, I'm making sure my piece is not bouncing. Now if I would hit out here, look at I have all that bouncing. If I hit back here, bouncing. So I want to get that piece settled right where there's no bouncing so it's nice and secure. And just like that we cut, maybe cut to length for a baton or some kind of cook system. And there you go guys, that is your hot axe tips for today on bucking logs. I know they're not big logs, they're just small sticks, but it is definitely a technique you need to know if you're gonna be yielding one of these things. So definitely work smarter, not harder. So if you like this video, hit like and subscribe down below. Also check us out at coldcrackerbushcraft.com for all our classes, merchandise, and our blog. And then um, I think that's it. Until the next video, stay in the woods.